thank you, Brenda. Um, when Brenda and Tara, is this the, okay. When Brenda and Tara asked me to come here, actually, you guys didn't say anything about coming on immediately following the governor, so we'll have to speak a little bit about that afterwards. But in, uh, in all seriousness, actually, it's just so uplifting to me to see so many high-level people here from so many different fields and, and so committed to the work that we're doing uh, each and every day in the schools. I, I just really, really want to thank all of you for being here um, at, at this event. And hopefully my story can contribute something to the work that, that we're doing today and, and going forward as we try to tr make that transition from vision to action. Um, so what I've got here really is just a site-based model of school improvement. Um, like Brenda said, I'm a middle school assistant principal in Martin County. It's a rural county about two, two and a half hours east of Raleigh. And I'm a 2013 graduate of the Northeast Leadership Academy right down the road at uh, fabulous NC State University. Just a couple background things about me first, uh, just to help frame where I'm from in, in College, I was a double major in physics and chemical engineering, worked as a consulting engineer for a few years, and just realized that I had a gift and a passion for working with, with young people, and I feel blessed to have found my, my calling in life. And I'm also a small business owner myself. I own a small-scale marina in Washington, North Carolina on the Pamlico River. So if you're ever down that way uh, or have a boat yourself, please look me up and we can spend a great day out on the river. But those two experiences really prepared me for what I'm doing now, my work, in, in a couple key ways. It gave me an analytical problem-solving background and then also a, a knowledge and an emphasis on the bottom line. And so as a couple other well-known people have said, Stephen Covey, keep the main thing, the main thing. And I think if Vince Lombardi were a school leader, he would have said student achievement is not everything, it's the only thing. So with that in mind, uh, when, I, when I left the classroom and became a school administrator, my, my first order of business was to conduct a needs assessment. I walked into my building, lots of hardworking, dedicated professionals, um, but there were some things in the way that were getting in the way of the outcomes. Uh, I've listed a couple of them up there on the board. We'd also had four different assistant principals in, in three years at that school. So everybody was, was almost on that proverbial ger gerbil wheel and, and doing a lot of work, but not having great results. And let me just add too that, that um, not all of our teachers were great. Most of them were, but, but finding hard uh, working and talented teachers, finding those, those really good teachers is, is very challenging to do. And, and actually last year we lost three of our all-star math teachers and it was really a big challenge uh, to replace those with, with folks that were at that same level. So what I really got from NC State was, was a systems approach to school leadership. And a couple of really key components with what the innovative things that NC State are, is doing. Uh, one was a principal residency. So while I was still in school, I had an opportunity to work under a great principal. Jan Wagner is doing great things at uh, South Creek Middle School. Executive coaching. NC State paired me up with a retired superintendent. Uh, we were able to talk on the phone every week. We met in person about once a month, and I still stay in contact with him right now. So that level of support was really, really critical to my success. So in practice, what this actually looked like with, and I've got a, a five point uh, talking point that I use the acronym PRIDE for. Our mascot was the Cougars, so we talked with our students and our teachers about showing our Cougar pride. And so for, what, for me, what that looked like in practice was procedures, relationships, instructional focus, effective use of data, and emotional labor. So I just want to go th through each of these just real briefly and what that looks like in a, in a school setting. Um, so procedures, the military is really great actually for having standard operating procedures. A big complex organization, you want to get people around a common goal. Everybody needs to know what to do in every situation. No different in a school. And I really see that as part of a continuum where you start with expectations. What is it that we're looking to do? The procedures are actually what that looks like in practice. Each and every day we have hundreds of students that have to get on and off a bus to and from class in and out of the cafeteria. Our staff members have to teach their classes. They have to get to effective meeting times and planning with each other. Administrators, we have evaluations and meetings to do. There's just a lot of tasks there that need to get done and we need to have effective procedures in place to meet that. Next, we have outcomes. So, you know, what's actually 
happening. And then lastly, we have consequences. And consequences could mean um, additional instructional support and resources for students who aren't meeting their learning outcomes, or perhaps even some behavior modifications uh, for students who aren't meeting those expectations. So just what does that look like and what is the impact of that? That is the last four years worth of discipline data at the school that I was at. The one all the way to the left was the year before I got there, and the one farthest to the right was, was last year. And that's the cumulative discipline folders. If any of you, I know some of you may have worked in a school, but if you can clear the discipline issues out, that allows so much extra time actually to focus on what we're really there for, which is the core mission of teaching and learning. All right, so relationships. At its, at its core, teaching and learning is a collaborative process and it really as needs that strong relationship between the teacher and the student. This notion of I won't learn from you is very, very real, especially in a lot of the schools like the ones that I teach in. If the students feel as though the teachers do not have their best interests at heart or respect them, uh, you may have a kid that say, I'm gonna I work hard for Miss Peel because I like her, uh, but Mr. Smith, he doesn't treat me right, so you know what, I'm not gonna learn from him, I'm not gonna do any of his work. And that can have a real negative impact on what we're trying to do. Um, an another component of that actually is building trust with our community. Just a really brief um, story with that there. When I got to my school, I did a little bit of research into the history of my school and found that we had been created actually over a series of consolidations leading back to the school integration. The school integration was, was obviously a very positive outcome, but in areas like mine, in a lot of instances, the African-American schools were closed and, and their traditions and customs were just left behind. And understandably so, actually, in, in some of the, those communities, some trust was lost with, with public schools. So I reached out to some community leaders and started to understand the stories of some of those schools that were closed. I brought everybody together, asked folks to bring some old yearbooks and photos, and we actually made a mural-sized family tree of our school and asked people to sign that. Okay, my grandmother went to this school. I remember uh, Mr. Johnson's English class, and, and they left their memories on that, and is up in the hallway of our school now, so when new people come in, uh, they can see that, and, and it honors the, the legacy and the, and the history of our school. Uh, the impact of that actually was it showed our community that I, I valued our history and our heritage and our past and I wanted to honor that. And the net effect actually was to build that trust that I had with my community. And now when I reached out for help with, with people, if I needed parents or grandparents to come in or do something or even just support at home, made a tremendous difference. All right, so instructional focus, that is, our, that is our core mission each and every day, and, and it's in the center of my acronym PRIDE and needs to be at the stay at the center of exactly what we're doing each and every day. Really, my biggest job on a daily basis is to help my teachers set instructional goals and to coach them so that they can achieve that. Because student learning is what counts. All right, so effective use of data. We are collecting all kinds of data in our schools. We really didn't have a systematic way of using that or implementing that. And in, in the business world, you all use data for resource allocation. You want to make informed, effective decisions. And in my case, the two biggest resources that I have to allocate are time and instructional staff. So I have a certain number of teachers. I have a certain number of hours in the day. Now it's a matter of how do I want to put the students in front of each of those teachers, which teachers get which students, for how long, and how many students at a time. Uh, it's appropriate that, that we're actually meeting here at SAS because they have developed an analytical software program called EVOS, the Educator Value Added Assessment System that I've really been able to, to use as a, as a lever and a driver to really increase student performance in my school. It is, it is typically applied to evaluate teachers, and I, and, I, and I think there is some benefit to that, but I've actually used it in a little bit different way so that I can now customize our student learning for each, for each student. 
Um, what this program really does is it provides a probability of success for every student in the state based on their test history, and it com they compare that with previous, the millions of students who have come through beforehand. And so we can tell, okay, is this student performing where we think they will based on the, an average teacher? Or do I have a superstar teacher in here that actually now these students are making a big jump up or someone that's not so effective and, and they went down? Um, SAS generates numbers in every tested subject for, for every student. And it really kind of goes on the basic premise that I might not need the same amount of time to learn math as the person sitting next to me. Maybe it might take me a little bit longer. And so with this analytical software, actually, I can make those decisions and, and give everybody the extra support that they need to. I kind of make the analogy of it's uh, comparable to Moneyball. If you've read the book or maybe seen the movie with Brad Pitt in it, it was, it was a baseball situation where they were using advanced statistics. The only thing here that's different, actually, is this is not a zero-sum game. Every school can use this effectively to increase student achievement. Now, in, in Major League Baseball, most teams are now using it, so you need to actually do that just to keep up with everybody else. All right, so lastly, emotional labor. This is from the book Lynchpin by Seth Godin. And it's really the extra work that's not required or even expected, for that matter, to make the difference between an organization that's good and great. When I get to school each day, I'm actually trying to achieve greatness. Uh, just good enough isn't gonna cut it for what I'm trying to achieve. And so in, in that case, details are important. And I've got a quick little visual here. I'm actually at a new school this year with about 450 students. I was discussing this beforehand with some folks. These are I don't know if you can see these photos of every student in my school. So within the first two weeks of school, I learned, I'm still working on them a little bit, but I've got about 98% of my students in my school, I know their names. I greet them by name every day as they get off the bus. So these kids are not just a number in my, in my school. Now, am I required to do this? No, um, I, I'm not. But I, I feel as though that personal touch makes the difference and is going to help us get to where we need to be. And... Um, you know, what the rest of us in this, in this room are, are looking to achieve. We're not just trying to get average education in the state of North Carolina. We're, we're looking to be the best, as, as Governor McCrory said. Um, so just real quick, back to that concept of, of the EVOS data. Each teacher actually gets a composite score, and it, that reflects how well his or her students did compared to, to everybody else. I'm just going to step down here for a moment. Um, and then... Each of those individual teacher scores, you can imagine, get summed, and that generates a school score. And that, and that EVOS composite growth is then used as the growth component that you see in our school report card. So what this is right here, I'm just unrolling some data, is uh, last year's school composite growth scores for every state in the school of North, uh, every school in the state of North Carolina. There are 2,000. 405 schools, I believe. And the ones that I'm rolling um, down there, thank you so much, Katie. Katie has got the lowest ranked growth schools. So you may ask, okay, this sounds good, Larry. Uh, you learned some great things at, at NC State to think more systematically about your school. Uh, you put some of those things in place. That, that all sounds good, but you know, at the end of the day, it's really about the outcomes and is it, is it having a difference? So I just want to show you where our school had ranked the last, the last couple years. I'm getting close to the end here. Appreciate you bearing with me. Almost there. All right, so this is South Creek Middle School right here. And that's how far we are from the top. So we've still got a little ways to go to, to really achieve our goal. But that's, that's reflective of the kinds of student gains that, that we were seeing with this systematic approach. And um, thank you. And just reflective of, of the hard work that our, that our teachers and, and students are doing. And um, you know, really, it's, it's my focus and, and everything that I got at, at NC State in terms of, of having this mindset and, and trying to achieve greatness each and every day at our school. Um, so thank you very much. I look forward to being a part of the rest, the rest of the day here. I know we've got some other great speakers lined up for us to get us started as well. Thank you.